All right, uh, let's do this. What uh, what pins we got? We've been putting these in the store. We got Nimbus, the friendly cloud entity, hacking that IoT. Nimbus is GDPR compliant. Nimbus <laughs> doesn't sell your data out. Nimbus yeah. keeps it safe in the cloud and is yeah. so happy. Our little mascot for our IoT service, Adafruit IL. Show your IoT pride, a little Nimbus character. Okay. When we're out, we're out. Yeah, next up. We also have a uh, Blinka eating her own tail. Um, Python is kind of interesting. Python has this ability to interpret its own code. So this is sort of like the, the philosophical uh, philosopher's stone, a yeah. val, and the, the, repl, the E in the REPL is for a val. It can evaluate itself. So maybe you're into that. Maybe you like to make uh, self-perpetuating code. You should uh, get this pin. <laughs> okay, next up. Okay, we have a whole bunch of stuff from Pimeroni. So if you have a micro bit and you want to add more hardware to it, you're in luck. Okay, we're going to start off with the EnviroBit. This has a sound sensor, a light and color sensor, and a, a humidity or barometric pressure temperature sensor on the back. And uh, there's make code for it. So you can drag and drop blocks. They also have micro Python code for it. You just snap your micro bit in. You can even show it off on the overhead. It goes like this and you just snap it right in and boom, you're done. Oops, sorry. Boom, you're done. Super easy. Snaps in place, you can mount it. And yeah, it's got a air quality sensor, weather station clap sensor, color sorter, tree detector, night light, or some ideas. Um, here's the sensors, a beautiful silk screen as always, and works great with your micro bit. So a really nice add on for all you micro bit folks out there. Oh my goodness. Sorry. I put this on upside down. Don't worry. It won't break if you put it upside down, but you should put it on with the LEDs facing up. So that's the first thing from Pimeron we have this weather bit, enviro bit. Okay. Okay. What else we got? But we're not done. No. We also have the LED shim. This adds, I think, 28 RGB LEDs with an ice quartz LED driver. What's most interesting about this design is its press fit. Now, I will warn you, um, if you've used your Raspberry Pi a bunch and you've kind of bent the pins a little bit, they might not press fit so well, in which case you would want to solder on headers or solder it directly to your Raspberry Pi. Um, but if you have a new Raspberry Pi, it, it does press fit quite nicely. And we have a demo of it here. So you can see it just snaps right on and you've got all these LEDs. And if I unplug it, it'll stop working. So I don't want to do that quite yet. And the LEDs kind of stick out. Um, so you can put hats on top and uh, this can be a little um, like a bar graph display or use it to um, show off, you know, um, how much disk space is being used with the little range or just uh, show off some really cool colors. It all happens over I2C, so it's really easy. They have example code in Python for you, ready to go. Um, it's just really cool. You just snap fit it on, just press fit to right onto your Raspberry Pi. Works with any Raspberry Pi with a two by 20 connector. So your Pi Zero or your W3, B+, B2, whatever, all those are good. Just the original Raspberry Pi one, it won't work because it won't fit on. Okay, next up. More micro bit stuff. The third thing we got from them is this pin bit. Super simple. You plug in your uh, micro bit and then you plug into a breadboard and then you can attach all sorts of stuff. So you can make a breadboard friendly projects. So I can show this off as well. Same deal, comes fully assembled, comes with this little plug on. You plug this in, you snap it in, and then um, let me grab this power supply, plug it in. And boom, wow, NeoPixels are working so Make code running on this to light up these NeoPixels. Maybe you don't want to um, use alligator clips, maybe you want to more components, maybe you just want to do a lot of breadboarding. Um, we've got nice little labels here. It's compact and easy to use, uh, super simple. So okay. that's the pin bit. So it's the third item and another great micro bit accessory. All right, next up. I like this one a lot. This is super simple, but boy, is it effective. You have a DC motor, like one of these like 130 size motors. It's like, I think about 20 millimeters diameter. And you're like, how do I mount it onto something? Cause you can't really, it's really hard to mount these. There's yep. no mounting tabs and mounting holes. But I found this little toxic widget 
super simple, designed exactly for this. The motor press fits in, it holds it very solidly. Um, there's a hole in the bottom so you can attach it uh, very easily to whatever uh, you may want. And it, that's it. I mean, like it, 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 it will push out, like if you really bump it, but for just holding it solid, um, it works great. And yep, it, great for any robotics project where you just need to have a, a fan. A fan, or you want this to pull something. And you just, you just want to attach it without having to get like a bunch of hot glue or like, and then I've, that stuff doesn't really work long term anyways. Um, this is solid attachment. It also works with full solid motor. It doesn't have to be the motors that have these. Um, some of them don't have these notches. Some of them are fully round. If it's about 20 to 25 millimeters, it'll be fine. Use an M4 screw over here. Um, it's even countersunk a little bit, so that's really nice. Uh, so it won't get in the way if you have a fully round motor. And uh, yeah, okay. 20 radius 20 um, millimeter. Uh, just. We're trying to get the best, easiest robotics parts in. So this is this solves one of the bigger problems we've had, which is how do you attach that thing? Yeah. Now you can attach that thing. And the other other technique I've seen and used is like you wrap it with like masking tape and then hot glue it, so you can kind of get it off later. But it's like ah, uh, like that's not. You can really do it, but this works this, way this works better. better. Okay. And they're super cheap. Next up, AdaBot sticker. AdaBot sticker. We sorry. have an AdaBot sticker. This AdaBot head sticker is super fun show, uh, for, so we have it it's about two by two and a half inches it's shown the overhead yep it's a vinyl sticker it's die cut so you can um, peel it off and it's vinyl so it'll last a very long time great for putting on your laptop or your books yep or your kindle or your i don't know whatever you want your robot Whatever's. um this also is uh, one of the things we included in Ada Box 8, but they were just so cute, we had to have them for the store. So yep. pick up a little Ada Box. Hi, hi, hi. Okay. <laughs> and star of the show tonight, besides the community and our lady here, the engineer, is this. You will like this. You will. Yeah. So let me explain why this is good. This is good. So ink displays, you've seen ink displays or in your Kindle or in your Nook. Um, you know, you've seen them maybe uh, in some stores, they have them as... Um, price displays. Um, this is a 1.5 inch display. Yeah. I'll turn this upside down. So this can we can watch it refresh while I talk. This is a tricolor display. It has black ink and red ink. Um, so you can do just black if you want, you can do just red if you want, but you can also have things that are both black and red. This is the background color, which is kind of a whitish color. Um, it's just going through a cycle of erasing and then redrawing. So in a moment, it'll, it'll redraw. And you'll see it does the inversion, it erases, it kind of has, has to do this kind of pulse on and off. So it doesn't instantly update. It does take a few seconds to do an update. But this is the best way to um, get the nicest quality color. You'll see the red is really nice and sharp and the black is really nice and sharp. It's 150 pixels by 150 pixels. So you're thinking, ah, I can buy these anywhere. What's the big deal? You're not the first one to do ink. Yeah, but I actually solved the problem that nobody else did, which is I put some SRAM on it. And the code we wrote, if you do the math, in order to buffer this display of 150 by 150 pixels with black and white, you need 6K of RAM. Because these displays, you can't read back from the frame buffer. You have to write the entire buffer all at once. Um, That's just how e-ink drivers work. So for a lot of these e-inks, either like you can only display you know, straight from an SD card, so you have an image, you, you can't actually um, draw text or lines or circles or squares, you can't use it as a display, you can only blit or, or push the entire display at once. We put SRAM on the back of this, this chip here, it's about 8K of SRAM, maybe it's 16, I don't remember. So you can, have, you can have a frame buffer, you have a double buffer here that you can work with, and it's, it's SRAM, so it's super fast. Use that for drawing out what you want to have it display. And then um, our code will take the SPI data from the SRAM and push it to the display for you um, when you ask it to. So you don't have to use any of your careful, you know, carefully managed microcontroller memory. Especially on something like an Arduino Uno compatible or even something like an M0, you have 32K, but why spend a quarter of it on buffering your frame buffer? So the RAM on the back is really nice. It makes it so you can actually use this at a reasonable speed and display anything you want, text, images, graphics, interfaces, you know, barcodes, QR codes, whatever you want, you can design those and have those buffered What type in. of code examples do you have? At this time, we have Arduino code. Mm -hmm. 
um, we're polishing up the Circuit Python code, and the Circuit Python code will, um, some people who watched from the last week, will run on Raspberry Pi as well as our Circuit Python. That's a big deal. Yeah, we just want to make sure it's yeah. the. We want to just uh, tighten up the Circuit Python code, uh, make some fixes that uh, make it more compatible with 3.0. Um, since uh, we wrote this code originally in 2.0, and we have to just update it, but we will have Circuit Python code as well. Um, okay. One thing I do want to mention. You have to update these once a day, or you get a little bit of a pinky effect. So that you can yeah. see this a little bit pinker. That's because I haven't refreshed this one in like a couple days. So you want to refresh these about one a day to keep that nice crisp white background. Um, but yeah, but you can basically update them every two minutes. That's the specification. Um, many, many, many thousands of times and uh, display anything you want, 150 by 150 pixels. So this is our first e-ink display. We're gonna do a couple more yep. um, once we get our code base going. But I think we, we finally come up with something really cool here. I think that the SRAM and then having a micro SD socket for yeah. displaying images. And what's neat is like, you know, for the folks who've just seen these for the first time, like, you know, it's not plugged into anything. It's, yeah, just, it's just, just working. Hi. Yep. And for ultra low power usage, the regulator that controls everything has an enable pin. You can completely disable all power. So for ultra low power mode, I know that the e-ink is like low power, but you can shut down the SRAM, you can shut down the micro control, uh, the micro SD card, you can shut down the level shifter. For people who are like, no, I really want it to be as low power as possible, um, that is totally possible. Okay. And with that is Micronix. Yes. Ooh.